Hey guys, welcome back to another Tech That Prepare episode. In today's edition, we're gonna be working on this MacBook Pro. This is a 16 inch space gray, uh, model A2485, and this unit was mailed in to us for a speaker replacement, uh, both of them. So let's go ahead and get into this repair. So we're gonna start by flipping the unit over and removing the bottom cover here. use the help of a suction cup just to make it easier so we're going to start in the center and pull upwards and now we're going to pull the bottom cover towards ourselves while pushing the top case away to pop that bottom panel off so the very first thing we're going to do is go ahead and remove the two t3 screws that are holding the trackpad flex cable uh, and its retention bracket into the logic board. The very next thing we're gonna do is unplug the battery management unit flex cable. Now we're gonna take a T5 screwdriver and undo the pancake screw that connects the battery to the battery daughter board. We're just gonna pry this up and away from the contact points. Now our unit's safe to work on. So the next thing we're gonna do is take our T3 screwdriver and start on the left hand side and work our way around the board by removing all of the covers and retention brackets for various cables and connections. So the top left one there is gonna be the touch ID. This left hand one right here is going to be the left hand uh, type C connector. Our two speaker connections on the left and right. This is going to be for our headphone microphone jack. And this is going to be for our first uh, two right hand side type C ports. Top one here is going to be for the MagSafe 3 connector. And the very, very top one angled the other direction is the LCD proximity sensor uh, that tells the unit when the screen is closed and open. do have two more in the center here uh, that are going to be the LCD connections uh, and also the Wi-Fi vent module antennas. All right, so the next step is to repeat that same process in that same order. And going around the board and just unplugging all these flex cables. So that is every connection unplugged from our logic board. We just have a few more steps before we can go ahead and remove the logic board and then replace the speakers. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and continue top down. We're gonna need a T5, a T6, and a uh, bit that is a 4.0 uh, hex to take off the two nuts on either side of the bottom of the logic board. Uh, well, again, we're gonna start at the top with our T6. And now we're gonna switch to a T5 and remove the rest of the screws holding the logic board in. going to take that hex head and remove the two nuts on either side. And now our logic board's ready to be removed. So the one thing I'm going to do before I go to remove it <coughs> is make sure all of these are bent out of the way. And now we're going to take a plastic pry. You could start on either end of the board. I find this one's easier to lift up uh, rather than the left hand side here make sure we don't snag any of our cables and that's our logic logic board finally removed and now we can finally access the speakers to remove them 
So these are glued in speakers. To make it easier to remove them, we're gonna use some isopropyl alcohol all around them. We're gonna let that sit for a minute and come back once it's started to break down the adhesive. And we'll go ahead and pry them out. All right, so now that the isopropyl has broken down the adhesive a little bit, we're just gonna go ahead and start to pry them out. So that's both the speakers finally removed. We just have to go through and clean up the remaining adhesive before we place the new ones in. Uh, to do so, of course, I'm just gonna put a little bit more isopropyl alcohol just to help break the bond it has to the top case. And now I'm gonna use a scraper and scrape it off. All right, so that's all the adhesive removed. We're just gonna wipe it down and then prep our speakers for installation. So now we're gonna go ahead and take some 3M adhesive and lay some lines down here for the speaker to adhere to. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and peel off all of our adhesive covers here to get them ready for the speaker. And now we're gonna go ahead and unpack our two new sets of speakers, right and left, and lay them into place, making sure we stick them to the adhesive. Repeat the same process for our left hand speaker. And if you guys are looking for any parts or tools, specifically these speakers, as they're pretty hard to find, especially Apple OEM, check us out at techdep.com. If you're interested in a mail in repair or advanced data recovery service, check us out at techdep.com. We do it all every day. So now that we have the new speakers installed, we're just going to let the adhesive. I go ahead and bond with them just for a few seconds before we continue. So now that the adhesive is fully adhered to our new speakers, we're gonna go ahead and take our logic board and reinstall it. There's a lot of things to note here. Uh, when you're reinstalling this logic board, you need to make sure uh, that these little rubber grommets are of course open when you're installing these sections of the heatsink. Make sure you don't cover any of the cables or wires uh, that need to run from underneath the board to the top and make sure your battery is lined up and especially make sure you don't damage uh, these LCD connectors at the top. Uh, so the easiest way to do this is to start with the left hand side. It does have to angle down and in for the uh, SD card reader as well as our uh, USB port over here. So the easiest thing to do, like I said, is just angle it down and in. Make sure we don't cover any of our cables as we're coming down. So I actually did cover one here. You want to make sure your Touch ID cable is not covered, just like so. We have our uh, LCD connectors up. Down here we have our keyboard backlighting, our keyboard, our uh, battery management unit flex cable, trackpad of course, our CPU fan cooler, or just our cooling system fan uh, then we have our speaker and this type c port here and of course our touch id again so that looks all good now we're going to move over to this side we need to make sure we don't cover this fan header and get this rubber grommet back to the correct side and make sure we don't cover any of our cables so it looks like we're resting on the headphone jack flex cable just bend that one back out of the way our microphone array cable here being a little difficult there we go now it should just shimmy down and lay into place there we 
we are. So that's our left hand side, the SD card reader snapping into place. Now we're just hung up on the top here. All right, so we went ahead and got the board finally set. Uh, this one actually had some issues with the heat sink. Uh, for some reason they weren't sliding quite right into uh, the grooves here. So we had to remove the rubber grommets in order to give it more clearance. Not too sure uh, kind of what happened on that, if the grommets were damaged, expanded, or what went on. Uh, but it looks like everything's in. None of our cables are covered. So we're gonna go ahead and start plugging them all in. Of course, we're gonna start in the top left and work our way around, uh, starting with the touch ID and power button. Followed by this left-hand Type-C connector and our left-hand speaker. Moving on to this cooling fan here. Now to the keyboard and the keyboard backlighting cable right next to it. The reason why I always recommend uh, plugging these cables in first before you start securing the board into place is you'll know right away if you're missing one and it's a lot quicker just to unplug all the cables versus having to unscrew uh, everything. Our right hand speaker, our microphone array, our headphone microphone jack, both of our type C connectors, our MagSafe 3 charging port, our LCD proximity sensor, and we're going to go ahead and re-clip the LCD display connectors into place. And that's all of our connectors laid in. We're gonna go ahead and take our Wi-Fi vent module and plug these in while we're here. There we are. Now we just have to go around the board again, left to right, uh, securing all of the covers back on. Uh, but first we're gonna screw the board into place. So we're gonna start with the hex heads on both the right and left bottom sides of the board. Now we're gonna go back to a T5 screwdriver for the rest of these screws until the top two where we use a T6. Now we're gonna grab our T6 and screw in the top two screws that hold the heat sink as well as the logic board. Now we're gonna go back to a T5 to screw in the two outside screws for our Wi-Fi vent module. And we're gonna stick with that same T5 for the four that hold the uh, LCD connectors as well as the vent module to the top case in the center. We're gonna grab a PL1 for the nine screws that also secure the Wi-Fi vent module to the top case. Now we're gonna use a T3 to replace all of our brackets. I'm gonna start with the speaker on the left-hand side here. Move on to the speaker to the right-hand side. Uh, do notate that the larger of the two T3 screws goes on the bottom side and the smaller goes on the top. I'm going to work my way up the right side of this board here by just securing these various connections starting with the headphone microphone jack, the two type C connectors. Uh, remember this bracket does have three T3 screws. Moving on to the MagSafe 3 connector and its securing bracket. And for the final connector on the right hand side of this board, it's going to be the securing bracket for the LCD proximity sensor. 
And moving on to the center, we do have three brackets. The first two are gonna be for the LCD uh, display connector connection to the main board. And the second, sorry, third bracket, the all black one is for the Wi-Fi vent module. Antennas, just to make sure they don't come loose. There is also a center third screw, that one right there. Uh, that just makes sure the cables don't have any slack and can come loose. Moving on to the left hand side here. I'm going to start with this type C connector. Uh, the way you can tell that this is the left hand side type C connector is one edge is flat and one edge is rounded on this bracket. go to the touch ID power button and we're gonna go ahead and now reconnect the battery with the T5 screwdriver using that same pancake screw we're gonna go ahead and plug back in the battery management unit flex cable if your unit does not detect the battery if it turns off when it's unplugged if it's not charging uh, make sure that this battery management unit flex cable is fully secured. Try reseeding it a couple times. Uh, but if the battery is acting weird or the unit's just turning off, that's the root of your issue. We're going to go ahead and plug in the trackpad and secure it down by using the included bracket and two T3 screws. Now we're going to go ahead and place our bottom case on. You'll notice that there are some feet at the top here, as well as some receptacles at the top. We're gonna line up either corner and we're gonna slide it forward. I like to do them one at a time. If you're good enough at it, you can do them at the same time, but I usually prefer just to do one and one, like so. so we're gonna click all of it down screw our pentalobe screws. Uh, the longer ones do go at the top and the slightly shorter ones go across the bottom. All right, the only thing that's left to do is turn the unit over, plug it in, and make sure our new speakers work. So we've got our charger here. Uh, it is a type C one instead of the a MagSafe one, but it'll work all the same. Let's go ahead and open it up. And we can hear both the speakers work and they're not blown out. Alrighty, thank you guys for watching. Leave a like, comment, and subscribe. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. And with the help of the community, we'll make sure to assist you. If you saw any parts or tools you need in the video, check us out at techdep.com or click the link below for mail-in repairs. We'll see you guys in the next episode.